Now in this video, what I want to show you is how we can apply stationary points to practical applications. And here is a typical example. What we've got here is an open box. And we're given that the total surface area is 486 centimeters squares. And the length is twice the width. What we've got to do is find the maximum volume and show that that volume is a maximum. Now if you're given a problem like this, always draw a sketch. And so I've drawn my open box and you can see inside, you can see that it's open because I've included these edges here. Now we don't know the width, so we better give it a letter. So let's say we call it X. Okay, X centimeters that way. We know the length is twice that, so that would be 2X. Now we've got to find the volume. So if we were to say that the volume V, we'll define the volume by the letter V, it's going to be for a cuboid, the area of the base, that would be 2x times x, 2x squared, multiplied by the height. Now, unlike the length, the length was related to the width. We've got nothing here that tells us about the height in relation to the width, x. So we're just going to have to call that by another letter. Let's just say h. So the volume is going to be 2x squared times the height, 2x squared h. Now, where are we going with this problem? Well, essentially, what we want to do is try and find a relationship between v and some other variable. And at the moment, what we've got is two variables here. As we change x, so will the length change and so will the height in order to keep this fixed area. Now, what we need is just one variable here, and that variable that we're going to choose is the width, x. So we need to get a relationship for v in terms of x, because once we've got that relationship, we would be able to then draw a graph. Draw a graph, say, I don't know what the graph would look like at the moment, but there'll be a graph out there, some relationship between v and x. And what we're looking for is this maximum volume here, which is achieved at this stationary point. And we've learnt in the past that to get a stationary point, we need to differentiate. In this case, it would be dv by dx. And we need to put that equal to 0. The gradient would be 0. So that's where we're heading. We need to get then an equation for v in terms of x. That means we need to get rid of this h. So we look for another equation that relates x and h together. And we get that from looking at the total surface area. Now, the total surface area we know is 486 centimeters squares. And we can work out the area from the cuboid here by taking the base. Base area would be 2x times x, being a rectangle, that would be 2x squared. We have no top because it's an open box so we've just got one rectangle with an area of 2x squared we've got this face here it has an area of x times h xh and we've got another one on the back here okay so we've got two of those faces two with an area of xh take the front here we've got a rectangle 2x by h, so the area of this front rectangle is 2xh. We've got another one at the back here, another 2xh. So we've got a total of 4xh there. And so if we simplify this, we've therefore got 486 equals 2x squared plus a total of 6xh. Now we could simplify this further and divide through by 2. And if we did that, each term divided by 2 gives us 243 equals x squared plus 3xh. Remember, we want to make h now the subject. So we'll just come down here. So if we rearrange this, we would take x squared from both sides and then divide by 3x. So that would therefore give us that h equals 243 minus x squared 
and that would all be divided by 3x. Now we've got h in terms of x. So we can go back to the volume and substitute this in for h and then get v it totally in terms of x. So that's what we're going to do now. So we've got the volume v equals 2x squared just put that in, 2x squared times h but h now is 243 minus x squared all divided by 3x. Now we can cancel out one of the x's there, it's a common factor, we can say x into x goes once here and x into the x squared just leaves us with the x here. Now I could expand the bracket and if I expand the bracket I'm going to get 2x times 243 which is going to be 486x and that's divided by 3 might as well divide that by 3 and then we've got 2x times the minus x squared so that's minus 2x cubed and that's divided by 3 now 3 goes into 486 it goes in exactly 162 times so that's 162x and then we'll just leave this term on the end here as 2 thirds x cubed right now we've got this far we now need to find out what the gradient is at any part, a point on this curve of v equaling 162x minus 2x cubed over 3. Now I know that this curve doesn't look like this but this is just here just to give you an idea. So we need to find dv by dx first of all. So if we differentiate this in the usual way, dv by dx is going to equal 162 here, whoops, just doing that bit wrong there, 162, and then if we differentiate this term, we're going to get minus 2x squared. Now we know then that at stationary points, we just write this in, I'll just write it stat first of all, just because I want to save a bit of room. At stationary points, we know that dv by dx equals 0. And what's that going to mean? It's going to mean that this equation, therefore 162 minus 2x squared, that's got to equal 0. OK, let's just come down here now. We need to solve this equation. So if we were to divide through by 2, that would give us 81 minus x squared equals 0. Rearrange that and you end up with x squared equaling 81. So, or 81 equals x squared, either way. Okay? Now, to find out what x is, we just need to square root both sides, and that means that x is plus or minus 9. Don't forget plus or minus. Now, we're dealing with a practical problem here where x represents this width, and the width can't be a negative number like negative 9. So watch out for that kind of thing in these practical problems. So we're just saying here, but x has to be greater than 0. And so what that's going to mean is therefore x is 9. We'll talk about what this minus 9 is, where it appears on the graph, later on in the video. But for now, the length has got to be 9. Now, that means what are our dimensions for the rectangle? Well, clearly we've got x, the width here, let's just say w, that's going to be 9 centimetres. The length here is going to be 2x, so if we just say l is the length, that's going to be 18 centimetres. And to get the height, h, all we need to do is substitute x equals 9 into the formula we had for h. Here we are, up here. Well, I'll leave it to you to substitute 9 into that, 243 minus 9 squared all over 3 times 9. If you do that, you'll end up with 6. 6 centimetres then is the height. So, we're asked to find the volume, OK? So, if we are going to get the volume, we've got the volume V is going to be equal to the width, 9, times the length, 18, 
times the height 6. Work that out and you'll find you end up with 972. Don't forget the units, centimetre, cubes. OK, so we've got a volume now, 972 centimetre cubes. But we're assuming that it's the maximum just by this sketch graph. But how do we really know that? Well, that's what we've got to do here. Show that this is a maximum. And there's two ways to do that. Two ways of looking at the nature of this stationary point. Let's just put a subtitle here, nature, OK, of stationary point. Now, what are those two ways? Well, one way is to draw up a table. So if we were to draw up a table, something like this, we would have x here, we'd have some columns, and we'd look at the gradient dv by dx. Now we're looking at the stationary point when x is 9. So we take a point to the left, let's say 8, a point to the right of 9, let's say 10, and as we've done before, we know that when x is 9, dv dx, if we were to substitute it in here, comes out to be 0. And 0 gave us a horizontal gradient. If you were to substitute 8 into dv by dx down here, okay, what you should find that you get is 34. 34 is a positive number and a positive gradient would be a gradient going like that. So on the left of x is 9, we've got a positive gradient. Substitute 10 into dv by dx, and you'll end up with minus 38, a minus gradient. Minus gradient means it's going downwards. So can you see? We've got a maximum. The other way that you could have shown that it was a maximum was by doing the second differential method. In other words, for this particular question, work out d2v by dx squared. And if we differentiate dv by dx with respect to x, the 162 goes to 0, this term goes to minus 4x. So we need to test the point when x was 9. So if we say when x is 9, we get that d2v by dx squared is minus 4 times 9, minus 54. In other words, a value less than 0. So this tells us that we've got a maximum. So either way, what we've got is that, therefore, the volume v is a max. It's a max, and that proves what we had to show. Now, just for the record, I did say that I'd sketch this graph here, but I'm just going to show you what the real graph of v plotted against x, this equation here, looks like. It looks like this. A negative x cubed graph, all right? A negative x cubed graph looks like this. What have we got? Well, we saw that we had stationary points when x equaled plus or minus 9. So clearly you can see now that we've got 9 here, and this stationary point down here was when x was minus 9. All right? So there was our stationary point up there. The value of v at this point was 972 centimeter cubes. OK? Well, that brings us to the end now of this tutorial. And I hope that's given you some idea of how we can apply stationary points then to practical problems.